Hi. It was mid-June in the year 2011. It was about 4.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I was packing for a trip to go to Mexico. I was really excited because this was the first time I was going to go see my mom's family in Rancho Viejo. Um, I, I really wanted to go because I really like the country lifestyle and that's what basically what it is, you know. Mountains, livestock, basically do anything you want to do there. Well, it was 5.30, 6 maybe, and we were, packing, uh, we were leaving to go to the, the border between US, the U.S. and Mexico. Once we get there, we go to a bus station in TJ that's going to... And that's going to take us from uh, Tijuana to Tepic Nayarit. That's where my mom's family lives. Well, we go, we reserve the tickets for around 10 in the morning. And then now it's just a waiting game because the ride's about 36 hours. And we just had to mentally prepare ourselves for that, basically. <laughs> <laughs> about 18 hours into the road trip, we make a pit stop in Culiacan, Mexico. And we, we eat, we go to the restroom, and then we're back on our way or so we thought. And th the bus driver constantly kept stocking, stopping for people on the side. He wanted to make money or I don't know, just kept stopping, stopping constantly for random people on the side. Well, in one of those pickups, he picked up two men. One of the men I remember good. He was short, he was dark skinned, kind of chunky. He had Asian looking eyes and he had curly hair, but kind of greasy too. And the other one, he was also short, but he was thin and bald. Well, they get in as if they were normal passengers. Just get in, sit down with supposedly luggage and everything. Then they just start observing people, looking at what they're doing, just looking, looking around. Then they get up both at the same time, walk to the back of the bus, and then just pull out guns and say, this is thick up. The first man just goes to the front of the bus, so the guy could keep driving the bus and won't stop it, you know? While the other man just start, starts getting anything with the valley. Well, once he came to me, I was shocked. I didn't know what to do, you know? He pointed the gun in my face and told me to give him my phone, my wallet, and anything else worth the value. I told him I didn't have anything except for like 200 pesos, you know, 15, 20 dollars maybe, depending. And then he didn't believe me, so he started patting me down. I don't know how, though. I don't know how. He didn't find, he didn't find the wallet in my back pocket that had, like, all my money. All my <laughs> I, I don't know how he did it. So he just, like, continued doing his thing, you know, stealing people's things. And then once they were done, it just so happened that they stopped right in front of a bridge that was, that was like kind of a freeway. They got off the bus, into a car, and just like sped away, never to be seen again. Well, we just went on, we kept going for a little while, and then we pulled over. The driver and the co-driver just came where they were sitting, and they looked at what the supposed um, their luggage was. It was just full of new newspaper. It didn't really have anything. It was just like a fake. It was just to a cover up, basically. And they just threw it out, and then we continued. Well, everybody was obviously scared. Like my my aunt started crying. Um, the everybody in the bus started talking about it, like jokingly after. But uh, they didn't. My aunt was like basically scarred for life. She was like just crying for the rest of the trip. Like, <laughs> um, well, this kind of changed me. I took it personal that they stole from me. I don't know. It kind of made me ambitious now. Now I'm like kind of money hungry. Like <laughs> I basically do anything trying try to get it, you know. And this was basically the the strangest day of my life.